Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuan. Today, let's talk about the restoration process of Paul Vin the Dacosaurus, a member of the PNSO Prehistoric Animal Models series. Dacosaurus was a very interesting thalatosuchian, which is colloquially referred to as a marine crocodile. Such animals flourished during the Jurassic period, but generally, they were not very big. Marine crocodiles in the early period, for example, Peipesuchus, which lived in Sichuan and Chungqing, looked much like crocodilians. They had a very slender head and sharp teeth, especially like today's gorillas. Marine crocodiles in the later period gradually fully adapted to marine life, and their limbs began to evolve into fins. Like many marine reptiles at the time, as they spent most of their time in the water, their body gradually became streamlined. Dacosaurus was such a member, the evolution direction of this animal was like that of ichthyosaurs and mesosaurs. Their overall looks easily make people confused. They all had such a long body, a round head, a pointed mouth with sharp teeth, for fin-like limbs, and a crescent-shaped tail. But actually, there were some very subtle differences between them, and they had big different features in terms of the anatomical structure. First, as a marine crocodile, the head of Dacosaurus still shared many features of crocodiles, for example, the shape of its eyes, the distorted shape of its skull, and many other parts were similar to today's crocodiles. If you look at its wide open mouth, the edge shape of its mouth was the same as that of a crocodile, which is a multi-segment interlocked structure. However, unlike many crocodilians, including modern crocodiles, its skull was very sturdy, which may have something to do with its adaptation to the sea. Its head was strong and heavy. Viewed from above, its head was much like that of a typical marine reptile, which is streamlined and round, with the rear wide and the front narrow. Its big mouth provided a strong bite force. Above its eyes, there was a superciliary arch structure made up of bones. The restoration picture is clearer. In this position, a row of keratinous structures wrapped these bones inside, which might be used to protect its eyes. Today, we know that the eye openings of crocodiles are on the top of their head. Semi-aquatic animals such as crocodiles and frogs always have their eyes in this position. The two eyeballs bulged out of the eye sockets. When they are alive, they just need to poke their head out of the surface slightly, so the two eyes could see the movements around clearly. However, Dacosaurus was different. As a full aquatic animal, it didn't need to have such a structure, which suggests that it might live in deep seas, far away from shallow seas. Its two eyes were on the two sides. When we restored its eyes, we designed smooth keratin on its brow bones. Such a structure could make it more streamlined to reduce the resistance of water. In restoration, we based on crocodiles and made vertical slit-shaped pupils. Besides, we adopted a similar way as a crocodile when restoring its ears. The ears of crocodiles shape like a long seam. When alive, there might be a movable membranous flap or a piece of movable muscle tissue that could protect its ears from the water. Its nostrils were relatively small. This nostril was restored with a flap at the opening. Look at this one that may be clearer. Its nostrils could contract and close. Such structures were similar to modern crocodiles. One significant feature of Dacosaurus is its fierce look which could be shown by its teeth. If you look at its skull, you can see that the exaggerated huge teeth, which were interlocked with each other, resembling modern crocodiles. These teeth were thick and strong. When it was alive, it didn't have lips. When its teeth were interdigitated, their roots were wrapped by a large number of soft tissues, similar to modern crocodiles. When its upper teeth interlocked with its lower teeth, the flesh would fill the slits between its teeth, making its mouth fully closed. Like crocodiles, it had a flat tongue, which might be fixed at the lower part of its mouth and couldn't move up and down as we do.
Today, many crocodiles have such a tongue too. In the depth of its throat, there was a valve, which could shut down and seal the mouth to prevent water from getting in. Above the roof of its mouth, there were two openings, called omronasal organs, also called the inner nostril. When the water came in, it would go through this position and then into its mouth. Many marine reptiles would make use of this function to taste the sea. Apart from marine reptiles, this structure is commonly seen in most dinosaurs and reptiles. Most terrestrial animals also have the same structure. In most cases, this structure is used to breathe. After the nostril inhaling, the air enters its mouth through its vomeronasal organs. This structure of marine reptiles plays the role of either blocking water or selectively allowing some water to come in so that it could taste the water. Its teeth were sharp and thick. Besides, there were clear growth marks on its tooth surface. The growth marks made its teeth look a bit like conches, as there were many lines. But unlike those of conches, which are spiral, it left marks layer by layer when its teeth grew. From the large-sized restorations, we can clearly see that its teeth have parallel marks arranged in loops. Besides, its body looked streamlined and smooth, as it didn't have armors like terrestrial crocodiles. Many marine crocodiles had evolved similarly to many modern whales, or dolphins with a smooth body surface without too many large scales. There might be some cracks on its limbs, like today's sea turtles. When restoring Dacosaurus, we based on the sea turtle, which possesses the most distinctive flippers. Generally, there were large scales at its fins. The forelimbs of Dacosaurus might still have nails, like seals or some sea turtles. The third finger of its forelimbs was the longest, which made its forelimbs shaped like the fins of sharks. The middle toe of its hind limbs was also relatively longer, forming a triangular structure, which could help it swim fast, consistent with fluid mechanics. In addition, at the end of its tail, there might be a forked fish called a fin-shaped structure, which was produced as the bone extended downward. This upper lobe was formed as the skin of its dorsal side extended upward. At its tail, we can see a few sets of strong muscles I shaped during the restoration. The muscles are separated by a line, which corresponds to the transverse processes on its tail. The transverse process on the tail of reptiles is the boundary between two sets of large muscles, so in the restoration, we made the transverse process to separate the upper muscles and the lower muscles. The muscles in the lower part were very strong, especially at the root. We can see that the thickness of the muscles at the root even surpasses the width of its pelvis. The tail of Dacosaurus was the main propelling force to help it swim in the sea quickly. Dacosaurus was an amazing animal. Although it looked like a close relative of crocodiles, its body structure had been highly adapted to marine life. It was also an interesting animal during the Jurassic period. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Paulvin the Dacosaurus. Thank you all.